Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, I needed some low effort content, because uh, I, I, effort levels for recording videos have been depleted, so we're going to be taking a look at people's memory timings. Um, yeah, let's, let's just get into it. And they're in whatever order Twitter has decided to put them in, because, yeah, I don't care. Anyway, so first up we have a 5800X 3D running some 3600, 14 Micron Rev E, yeah, Micron Rev E. TRFC's tie, SCLs are good, primaries are actually quite good, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a 3600, so yeah, that explains the TRCDRD at 18. But yeah, solid primaries, T yeah, the, like, the TRAS doesn't do anything when you set it like this. I have a video on that, so th this person evidently... Well, I don't know if they watched that video or if they just knew uh, or already that, like, TRAS isn't, like, on Ryzen, it's not really a real thing. Um, so, well, it's not that it's not a real thing. It's just, like, if you configure your other timings in the appropriate way, TRAS never does anything. Like, there's no scenario in which TRAS plays a role, and so you can just set it to 21 and call it a day. Um, anyway... Uh, yeah, so primaries look good, TRRD's good, TFAW good, TW... WTRs are very tight, but that's expected for Micron. TWR is kind of loose, actually, but, uh... Like, luckily that timing doesn't really affect performance that much, because that's just the delay between a write burst and a, and a pre-charge, and... Um... You don't have to do that that frequently, I want to say off the top of my head. SCL's good... I mean, I think I've already went over those. TCWL is interestingly low because the the thing is with ryzen you can either have really low tc tcwl or you can have low trdwr um and i would say that under most circumstances trdwr is more important than tcwl because tcwl controls the delay between a write command and the data getting sent whereas this controls the delay between uh the end is it end of a read burst or is, is it the gap between a read command and a write command i can't remember right now Anyway, this is used for back-to-back -back operations. This is single shot. Um, so, basically, this is more, like, yeah, for, like, sustained memory performance, this is more important. Th this this affects, like, a single write operation. This uh, affects, like, if you have a chain of reads and writes, this will screw up that chain. Um, so, I would probably do a looser TCWL and try lower TRDWR. Under most circumstances, it should be possible to have it at, like, 10 with a TCWL of, like, 14. Um, does that work out? It might even work at 12, now, now that I say that. But, um, yeah. The, the thing is, I don't usually manually tune this. I just kind of leave TCWL equal to TCL. And on most motherboards, your TRDWR will automatically be somewhat decent if you do that. But... Anyway, uh, also that'll probably loosen out your write to read delay, but uh, I think that works out just fine. Like, yeah, these these two timings are a bit weird in relation to, to cast write latency. Anyway, um, I don't think it would really make that much of a performance difference. So yeah, all around, this is just a nice solid profile. And this is on a B450M uh, Mortar Max motherboard. So yeah, uh, four layer daisy chain uh, topology on that. Though, with single rank dims, I'm really surprised that they didn't run this at, like, 37.33 or something. Oh, well. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, next up, we have some single rank V-Die on a Z590 Aorus Tachyon, not a motherboard you see very frequently. What's kind of funny is Gigabyte ended up selling these boards for, like, huge discounts, because they, like... What's crazy is they didn't make that many of them, because, like, <laughs> it's a one dim per channel board, they don't sell that well. Um, and even then they somehow managed to make way too many of them. So, uh, we've got 17, 17, 17 at 4,400, 2T command rate. I think 1T should be possible. Yeah. I'm not entirely certain about that, but I think 1T should be possible, but... Anyway, uh, you know what, I, I should open this image... No, image and new tab. Okay, well, there we go. Um, 12, 320. Okay, so good. Well, he's at 4400, so that TRFC does make sense. Uh, TRD LS44, WTRs, right, WTRs. 
So WTRs aren't real on Intel CPUs, as in the CPUs literally do not have a WTR register. They just use the write to read delay timings over here. And the difference between the two is this controls the delay between a between the end of a write burst and a read command, whereas this controls the delay between a write command and a read command. And that kind of sounds the same, but it's not. And that's why this is like way higher than this. Um, anyway, 26 and 22 is actually like, that's low for 4400. Um, yeah, so that's solid. Uh, RTLs look good, 62, 63, six, uh, wait, is it? Yeah, 6, 6, yeah, so good RTLs, TCK1 good, TREFI completely maxed out. Um, 5, 4, 12, 12, 5, 4, yeah, back-to-back -back timings are also very tight. So, yeah, this is, these are some good settings. I'm guessing this is on a, ten, yeah, this has to be like a 10900K or 10850, it says right there, 10900K. Um, yeah, so this, this is solid, and, uh, oops, I hate that. Anyway, um, and not even a ton of voltage. Like, that's... Yeah, that's like very reasonable voltage. These are some really strong memory sticks because 4400 flat 17s at 1.48 volts is, it's hard. Um, that's really hard. And also this is without a fan on the RAM. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, the not running over 1.5 volts into the memory certainly helps with not having to have a fan on it. But even then, and it's single rank, so it just doesn't run that hot. But um, yeah, it's still impressive. Um, Next up, we will have some 2x32 Micron Rev B, Corsair version 3.40. I'm not 100% certain that 3.40 would be Rev B. Like, the problem is that Corsair's Micron labeling scheme is, like, a mess. Um, so, yeah. Like, my immediate reaction seeing 3.40 would be that it's, like, a Rev A, but I'm not aware of that being a thing, so it might be Rev B. Anyway, um, 20, 24, 23, this is not great, Rev B, is what it is. 2T command rate without gear down mode. 2000 FC, okay, that, the fact that this runs is, is impressive, but then it's a Ryzen 5 5600, and... From what I've heard, apparently the single CCD chips have a better chance of doing high FCLK than the dual CCD chips. Anyway, um, yeah, so primaries are, especially the TRC, is absolutely terrible. Like, the crazy thing is this is way worse than, like, the Rev-B that I have. Then again, all of mine is, like, relatively high bin from Crucial, so that might be part of it. Um, anyway, 4, 4, 16, good. 4, 8, fine. TWR 12, fine. TRFC 620, it's Micron Rev B. You can't expect anything better than that. SCL's at 4, fine. Uh, TCWL 16, fine. RTP 8, good. TRDWR 12, 1, yeah, fine. 4, 4, 6, 6, good. TCK 1, good. Yeah, uh, nothing really wrong with this. That's kind of a lot of SOC volt. Uh, I guess it helps with the FCLK. It does it? Because his VDDGs are all really... Like, they're just one volt. Um, but, it, and it, well, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, so, it's not really a concern, but... Yeah. So, yeah, this looks good. Um, not the best specimen of Micron Rev B, but uh, not bad. Uh, anyway, next we have some apparently generic BDI timings. We're on a Pro Z690A Wi-Fi, so the MSI board, and 3900, 15, 15, 15, 28, 2, 12, 300, per bank doesn't exist, 6, 4, good, uh, 8, 4, wait, 24, 28, 24, 7, 4, 7, is this dual rank? Oh yeah, it is dual rank. Um, 7, 4, 7, 7, all good. RTP6, good. Yeah, no, was like, yes. Very generic BDI. Congratulations. You should be proud of yourself. Geared mode one. Um, and I'm a, what CPU is this on? Stable at 4000 running because I'm lazy and can't tell the difference. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> you don't say. Like, here, here's here's a fun fact, okay? If you want to know what, what difference something makes, best case, like, let's say you were completely 110% memory bottlenecked, okay? Um, the difference between 4,000 and 3,900 
is 2.5%. There's a reason you can't tell a difference. And it's because that's 2.5% and humans are just not that sensitive. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, VDIM is at 1.55, so we've got a pretty aggressive VDI profile. Yeah, Samsung VDI, uh, 8 gigabit on a Crosshair 8 Hero, 3800. Are these 16 gig DIMs or... Oh, whoa, this is some wacky for team group UD4s and... Uh, yeah, so we've got a mishmash of uh, team group and uh, Vipers. Fun. Um... Yeah, so Patriot Viper, I'm assuming that's Patriot Viper Steel for the 4400 CL19. Uh, 14.8, 14.8, this is, eh, it's not that surprising, because in my experience, like, I have one Fordim Asus board, and it really struggles at, like, 3866. Um, 3800 is fine, so, actually, this, this isn't really that surprising, um, with a 5800X. 14.8, 14, 1412, 2638, 4, 4, 16, 4, 8. All good. 250 is a really low TRFC, but not really... Like, it's a pretty low TRFC. It's not completely insane. SCL's at 2, good. TCWL 12, RTP 8. 10, 1, good. 4, 4, 6, 6, good. Yeah, there's nothing I can... There's nothing, like, generic good B-die. I mean, impressive primaries, especially the TRCD already... Oh, well, he's at 1.55 volts. Okay, well, <laughs> that explains that. So, yeah, solid result. Um... And dual rank B die without gear download can't even set 3600 with loose tri timings without getting errors. B550 Unify X. Thing is, I don't think I've done like I unfortunately don't have a lot of dual rank B die, like 16 gig dims, and so I've not really done a ton of testing with 16 gig dims on the Unify X. So I can't think uh, off the. Like, off the top of my head, I don't really have any suggestions, but we've got 14, 15, 13, so generic B-Die primaries, TRS-21, TRC-29. Damn, that's tight. That's a really low TRC. Actually, that TRC is so... is it? No, it isn't. No, it is. Yeah, so that TRC is so low that it doesn't actually do anything, because TRP is 13 and TRS is 21. So in this scenario, his effective TR TRC is 34. I'm pretty sure he could set TRC to 21, and it wouldn't make a difference. Like, his stability would be the same. You, Yeah, you should be probably able to do that, because his uh, TRP and TRAS are lining up to a TRC of 34. Anyway, uh, TRDS, we've got 4. TRDL, we got 4. TFAW 16, good. Uh, WTR is 3.7. Not not all B die kits can do that, yeah. So that's cool. TWR ten good. TRFC two eighty good. SCLs at two two good. TCWL twelve good. RTP eight good. TRDWR ten good. All good. And then, oh, he's doing the thing that like different DD. Yeah, it's set, like so because this is a uh, he's using sixteen gig dims, so the DD timings don't actually apply in this scenario, so they're at one, which is like okay, fair enough. Um, one point five volts on the memory. Yeah, all of this looks good. Kind of weird to have the like nominal termination disabled and the CL like the drive strengths are also weird. Like, again, I've not tested dual rank on the Unify X that much, so... Like, basically, I mainly use the Unify X for, like, high speed, like, single rank, high high, high frequency stuff. Um, that's a really high proc ODT, and the drive strengths are weird. Like, I'm kind of wondering if that's the main reason, like... Th here's the thing, so... Like, clock drive strength, this is, like, how hard... You, yeah, you can kind of think of it like how hard is the CPU driving the clock line to the memory chips. And generally, that doesn't really seem to affect much of anything in my experience. Then you have the addre address uh, command drive strength. So this is how hard the command uh, bus is being driven. And if this isn't correctly, like, if you don't have the command drive strength set correctly, basically it'll distort the commands. So if you send a read command... Uh, you need extra time for that read command to be intelligible for the memory sticks. 
which would probably explain why you can't run without gear down mode. Um, though on a lot of boards, like 20 ohm, ter like 20 ohms is ideal actually for one T command rate without gear down mode. So then again, like the Unify X is kind of a unique memory topology. Like there's, you know, it, it might be really different from all the other boards, but yeah, so th this isn't immediately a problem, but the 60 ohm proc ODT is really weird. Um, like, in my experience, most boards, it's best somewhere between, like, 32 and 40 ohms. On gigabyte, on a lot of gigabyte boards, it's best at 40, and then a lot of other boards, it's, like, 32 to 40 is where it works best. Um, I, like, again, I didn't work with this exact setup. It could be that these memory sticks on this board with this CPU do actually like, benefit from 60-ohm proc ODT, but I, uh, I am very, like, that seems really, like, way high, like, that seems weirdly high. Um, and then the, like, on-die termination drive strength and CKE drive strength, these don't really affect stability. Um, because, like, this basically just controls the because the memory controller actually tells the memory sticks to shift between termination states. So this controls how hard that signal is driven, and I don't think it's a very... Yeah, I don't think that signal is very sensitive. Um, and CKE drive strength, I can't even remember off the top of my head what that does. So uh, I'd have to look that up. Um, but also, like, like, generally, I use, like, 24-20, 24-24. And then 40 ohm proc ODT. Then again, I've not tried dual rank on the Unify X, so I might be wrong. Um, uh, yeah, like the, like the, I, and the other thing is I wouldn't worry about gear down mode that much. Like it doesn't make that much of a performance difference. So I, I wouldn't really, like if this was my setup uh, and these were my settings and I was dailying it, I would not care. I would just, like, I'd be happy that this runs and I wouldn't touch it because. All of the time, like all of the timings, except for like com uh, gear down mode, is are good. So it's like, who cares? Um, yeah. Anyway, Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 4000 CL18 Micron Rev OC to 4533 at 1.5 volts on a B550A gaming with a 5700G. Yep. APUs are pretty good. They, they do very high FCLKs, so 2267. Uh, it's a bit low, though. Like, I would... Well, I, I guess it depends how much SOC voltage you're running, which 1.25 volts is kind of high. Like, I wonder if this wouldn't do 4,600. Um, anyway, no gear down mode, but 2T for stability. Proc ODT at 43.6. That's interesting. This is a single rank setup. 18, 22, 22, 22, 43, 65. Okay, so doesn't subscribe to the school of just deleting TRAS. Um, but uh, yeah, this this is fine. TRDs are 4416, WTR is 48, fine, TWR 10, fine. TRFZ is a bit loose, but uh, like m most, like it's not gonna, like the thing is it's not gonna come down a huge amount. So I don't know that I'd worry about it too much. Then SCLs we got 4.4. TCWL14. RTP is a kind of loose, but it's just read to pre-charge, so that's not really that important. And TRDWR is kind of high. I, I do wonder if that couldn't be lower if the TCWL was, was higher, a bit higher. Um, and yeah, so this looks just fine to me. Um... But I would probably, like, I'd try to run, I'd try 40, I'd try 40, 4,600. Like, two th 2,300 FCLK should be relatively easy to do on a 5,700G. Um, anyway, next up we've got 32 gig Micron OEM 3,200CL22. ECC memory on a WSX570 ACE. Doing 18, 22, 22, 22, 42, 70. Which, uh, okay, pretty generic micron timings there. 
Um, four six sixteen, good. Four twelve. This is kind of loose. I I would really expect this to do like four eight or like twelve is really loose for WTRL. Um, not really the end of the world, but yeah, like that is surprisingly loose. TWR at twelve, that's fine. TRFC six five three, that's kind of loose. Um, SCLs are at four four. Good. RTP. Kind of loose. RD. Whoa. These two are terrible. This is like the worst read to write I've seen so far. I have no idea why that would be necessary. Also, your tertiaries are 5, 4, and 7, 6, which is bad. Um, they should be 4, 4, and 6, 6. Um... But honestly, for like OEM sticks, you know, like this is a this is a solid overclock. So, yeah. Anyway, up next we have some four thousand CL sixteen Patriot kit, cheapest V die where I live, running one point five volts, and doing four thousand fifteen sixteen sixteen thirty one. It's an interesting choice of TRAS, even on yeah for an Intel system. Command rate two, single rank dims. That latency is weirdly high. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... It's not like his RTLs are missing, so... Yeah, that latency is weirdly high. Like, I wonder if he just didn't rerun it enough times, because Ida is a terrible benchmark. Um, anyway, his secondaries... Yeah, like, his TREFI is just completely maxed out. His TRFC is not that loose. I'd expect this to be getting, like, 45 or something, not 48. But then again, Ida's latency test is, like, so incredibly inconsistent that I don't know, maybe he ran it once. Maybe he ran it right after running Memtest, which which would actually be terrible for it. Um, like, ba basically, if you want Ida to score properly, and you don't... Well, even if you have a relatively clean operating system, you, you should... Well, you should do it before running other things. Um, but anyway, um, the rest of the timing is 4-4, four, four, good. T fall 16, good. T you know what's really stupid? The timing order in a lot of, like, BIOSes and, um, and utilities to check timings. Like, TRDs and TFAW should be together. Just straight up. They should be right next to each other. RTP and TWR, I would argue, should also be next to each other. Though, admittedly, on Intel, RTP isn't, like, neither. Actually, fun fact. Wait, is TD... I'm no, TWR also isn't real on Intel. Because, yeah, Intel Intel doesn't like to track um, from... Well, we're not going to get into that right now. But, uh, yeah, it's basically just, like, with how... Like, the way Intel memory controllers track uh, write-to-read and read-to-write commands is very different from how the TWR and WTR timings work. Um, anyway, tertiaries look good. Um... Except the right to right. This is single rank. Oh, it's single rank. It doesn't really matter. But even then, right to right 8-4 is kind of high. Anyway. Um, yeah, but this doesn't look ter like This doesn't look terrible, so... Like, would I daily this? Yes. Like, this is still going to absolutely destroy any XMP profile ever created. <laughs> so... You know, like, it's it's still going to perform solid. Like, one, one timing being off by one tick is really not the end of the world. Um, especially since it's right to... Well, right to right, I would... I wonder about that. Kind of hard to... Tweaking that right to right timing would boost the right performance quite significantly. Um, probably. Yeah, it should. Anyway, um... What's this garbage? Do 
2666. Let's see if I can figure out what memory chip this is. Oh, it's... B it has to be B-Die. Yeah. It, it pretty much has to be B-Die. Yeah, it's a 4000 CL14 game. <laughs> The the TRFC is just a straight, like, giveaway, because, like, there is very, very, very few memory chips that'll refresh correctly if you only give them 135 nanoseconds. Um, yeah, so this is dumb. Please do not do this. If you want to slow compute, well... The thing is, this is on a 5800X3D, so, like, the memory latency is borderline irrelevant, but yeah, this is terrible. Don't do this. Um, this is just bad. What's kind of crazy, though, is that 2666-9910-9, even by DDR3 standards, is really freaking tight. <laughs> like, at 2666, for most DDR3, I would expect, like, actually, well, so you'd have, so there are, like, some memory kits of DDR3 that'll do, like, 8128, which is arguably better than 9910. No, it isn't. TRCD is more important than TRP. So I, I'd much rather have 9910, nine, like I'd much rather have 9109 and 2666 than like 8128. Though, funnily enough, I think if you bump the voltage even higher, you could probably do 2666, 810, like 8, 8, yeah, 8, 8, 10, uh, 8 probably? Actually, I'm not sure if the memory controller isn't limited to a cast latency of 9. It could all, like, the memory chips could also be. That is a concern. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is, this is just, like, dumb stuff that you can do with RAM. Um, kind of cool to see. Not, not actually, there's, like, no real-world scenario where doing this makes any sense, because your FCLK ends up being terrible. Even on Intel, this doesn't make any sense, because your memory controller's running at snail speeds. Um... Struggling to go above 3600, B550 I A or S Pro. Have you considered l running looser timings? Unfortunately, I've not worked with the B550 ITX from Gigabyte, so I'm not sure if it, it probably requires... Those are whack terminations. Those are really, really whack terminations. Also, that's not very much voltage if you're trying to run this these timings at 3800. I've not worked with one of the B550 IAORUS Pro AX boards. So I don't actually know if, like, how their memory topology compares to the... to the... the daisy chain boards. Um, so, like, it would make sense that it would potentially need different proc ODT. Uh, it might even need different termination, uh, like memory stick termination. But uh, this is whack. <laughs> two, two, one. This kind of reminds me of the incredibly cursed termination settings that I had to, like, ran on my daily system when I was still dailying, like, garbage tier 3200 CL16 Samsung B die. Because, um, yeah, that RAM just required... And also, like, it doesn't help that I have a early production daisy chain gigabyte board so the memory topology is also you know like not great and so the combination of garbage tier ram with not that great a daisy chain topology read led to just the weirdest termination <laughs> settings <laughs> um because uh yeah like the whole point of these is just to make sure that the signals don't reflect um around the memory trace, or, well, yeah, that, that's the main thing. Um, and so it really depends on, like, the motherboard and the memory stick topology as to what kind of termination settings you need, but this is whack. I And this is, like, not an old... I, I really think that this is... That, no, this is just extremely whack. Um, like, the, the, looking at this screenshot makes me want to... Add like try get one of these boards so that I could test it because this doesn't make any sense <laughs> like uh yeah anyway as for the actual timings they're good 
All right, 14, 15, 14, 21, 40. 4, 4, 16, 4, 8, 10, 280, 2, 2, 12, 6, 10, 5? That's kind of weird. 4, 4, 6, 6. Yeah, like this. This looks mostly okay. Um, the right to read being at 5 is weird. Um, under most circumstances, that should be able to do 1. I think. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a bit odd, but struggling to go above. Also, that's a lot of SOC voltage. But yeah, especially the terminations over here, this just looks weird. Well, BIOS version, this is F16B. Oh, well. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to solve this right now. I have just... Th this This looks super weird. <laughs> like, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just weird. I, it does Yeah. Anyway. Um, swapped up from Intel to AMD last month. Happy to see my $20 board do 3800. B450MDS3H-CF. I've never heard of that board. I'm going to have to go look that thing up. SCLs are 3.3. 3. Looks like B-Die. Yep, we've got B-Die. So 15, 15, 15, 30, 45. Good. 4, 4, 16. Good. 4, 10. Good. TWR10. Good. TRFC320. Good. SCLs at 3 is a bit weird. Gear down mode disabled 1T command right. Nice. Actually, that's kind of impressive for a B450 board. It should be a daisy chain, though. Um, and then we've got 6, 9, 1. Nice. 4, 4, 6, 6. Good. Yeah. Um, 52.9 nanoseconds of latency. Yeah, this is, this is really good. Um. What am I supposed to be seeing in that second screenshot? Because I am... It's the same thing, isn't it? Well, whatever. Looks good. <clears throat> oh, we're all over the... Well, you know what? Let's go... I want to do a couple more settings that are... Oh, man, this is cool. Remember when RAM sticks were cool instead of just colorful? Um, yeah, th this, this is cool. Um, anyway, uh, that's a... Wait... Oh, yeah, no, that's that's fine in terms of voltages, but more 6200. This man has apparently never heard of mem tweak. Actually, you know what's really... No, he probably did. But the... So, fun fact, Asus has the best memory timing utility for Z690 motherboards. And for some inexplicable reason, they refuse to put it on their website. So the only way to get that utility is from the hardware bot forums. Because... You know, like, why why would you put the, like, mem tweak it utility on the downloads page for, like, the ROG Apex or the Maximus Extreme or, or some, you know, freaking board that's, like, a DDR5 board for extreme overclocking? You, you, could, you could maybe just, like, put the memory timing utility on your freaking website. Wouldn't that be an idea? Anyway, let's, let's take a look at these timings. 32, 40, 40, 28. Good. 4, 4, 33... Uh, yeah, 44320, good. Wait. Oh, I guess RAS to RAS makes sense. Man, freaking Asus BIOS. Wait, is that, is that it? What about the rest of the... Right, no mem tweak it. Oh, well. Maybe someday Asus will, will like, <laughs> put the, the best memory timing utility onto their own website. But, yeah, so far that hasn't happened. And I have... Like, I have contacted somebody at Asus and went like, hey, could you maybe, I don't know, put Mem Tweak it on the freaking website? And haven't haven't heard from them since. Um, and the utility still isn't on the website, so that's kind of that. 2015 B-Dive, 4x8, 3000, 14, 14, 15 kit. Will not do over 3666 with passable primaries. Yeah, a lot of early B-Dive is kind of um, uh, not great. We've got an X570 plus tough, 14, 16, 14, 21, 31, 4, 4, 16, 3, 7, 
250, all looks good. SCL's at 22, good. TCWL 12, 8, 10, 1, good. 4, 4, 6, 6, good. There's really nothing here to complain about. Gear download enabled 1T, but eh, that's just fine. It doesn't really change performance that much, so... And it's 1.5 volts. Cool. Um, man, it's just like copy-pasted freaking Ryzen B-Die timings. 100% <laughs> daily. It's another B-Die setup. Man, this person must really hate their memory controller. Oh, wait, this is actually kind of neat. This is 4267 at 2133. But, uh, I'm pretty sure that is going to slowly disassemble the memory controller. That right there. Um. Also, if I'm not mistaken, this should disable your PCIe Gen 4. Um. Or at least it used, to, like, that used to be an issue for some Ryzen's where, like, 1.35 volts would cause massive issues. VDIM 2 volts. Wait a minute, this is a bench profile. 100% daily stable. No, it isn't. Not unless you have, like, a ridiculous max mem. And even in that case, like... 14... Four, this is, for 2 volts, this is actually kind of terrible in terms of primary timings. <laughs> like, yeah, this is... In terms of primary timings, this is actually just kind of terrible for 2 volts. At 2 volts and 4266, I, I would have expected CL13. Um... There's actually some really crazy memory sticks out there that'll do like 4200CL12 at f 2 volts, but, uh, yeah. Um, also, this is single rank. TRFC's at 200. Yeah, the TRFC scales with voltage, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, but this is not daily stable, and... I feel bad for that CPU's memory controller. Um, some trash RAM running 7400. Oh, running on a... Wait. 74... Intel, Intel CPU? What? I don't know what a 7400 is. Anyway, we've got 2400, 1415. It could probably go lower on that. TRFC's maxed out. I mean, refresh interval's maxed out. TRFC's okay. Yeah, the timings look fine. Like, actually, the timings look good. It's just a shame that it's on an H110 board, so, like, you can't... Actually, you might... You... You might have a BCLK control. You might be able to bump the BCLK to like 103. So instead of 2400, you'll be running like 2475. <laughs> uh, and it'll make absolutely no noticeable difference while potentially introducing some amount of instability. Um, anyway, we've got laptop RAM. I did say I want to keep this under like, well, screw it under an hour, but, oh, well, I'm, let's just keep going, um, 2933, 16, 17, do we have timings, oh, whoa, you can change the memory timings, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, uh, TCL 16, 17, TRDs are good, TRFC's not great, but I think he mentioned micro, no, Hynix 16 gigabit B die, I've never heard of that memory chip, anyway, Oh, whoa, this timing order is whack. 16, 17, 34, 14, 16. Oh, my... Why? Why is there no, like... Anyway, TWR is at 12. Memory voltage, 1.3. Command... Wait, what? No, it's command rate 1. Oh, I guess it's not... Uh... Not, um, trans... Like... It might just be d d down to, like, how the how the register is interpreted. Like, it might be, like, mode 3 rather than 3 command. Like, because there technically is a 3-cycle three, uh, three command stretch option. 
Um, but this that's this should not be that because it says CR one over here. Um, anyway, that's cool that you have a laptop that lets you change memory timings. Oh, and even back to back timings. Six, four, five, five. All good. Yeah, this looks good. So that's neat. Um, OEM Samsung B die. And this is why we do not buy OEM Samsung B die. <laughs> 16, 18, 16, 19, 17, 21, 58. Honestly, this isn't even that terrible in terms of the primaries. T falls at what? Why? Seven, like. What? I. Like, you function. Why isn't it at 16? Like, this is, like, he, he, he did the TRAS thing, right? He did the TRAS thing of, like, TRAS doesn't do anything. But, like, TFAL, if your TRDs are too loo are, are loose relative to TFAL, TFAL just doesn't do anything. Because TFAL exists to prevent too many activate commands being sent too quickly. But if your activate commands are delayed by seven cycles minimum, then... Like, the TFAL's just never, like, if you set your TFAL to 16, it's just never gonna kick in, because you're never gonna be able to send four activates in 16 cycles. It's physically impossible, because you're putting a seven-cycle delay between each act, between the activates. Um, actually, it's more like five, five activates, because TFAL doesn't delay the fourth activate command, it delays the fifth one. Which is, like... Like, to, to be fair, the name for active window makes perfect sense if you think about it long enough. But, like, as an immediate reaction, it's like, the for active window affects the fifth activate command, not the fourth. Right? Because the four, four activate commands fit inside the window, and the fifth one goes outside the window. Um, and, yeah, so it's it's kind of... Yeah, but anyway, uh, it's like, to be fair, it's not like it causes any stability issues. It's just like, I don't, like, you did the TRAS thing, and then why is your TFAW at 28? Anyway, uh, TRFC's at 450, yeah, like, OEM B die is, is, is terrible. Um, 4-4, four, four, and it's single rank, so all of the timings are at, well, all the sub-timings are, like, tertiaries are at 1. Um, Cool. 3200 CL22 dual rank micron e die unbuffered ECC 1622 164864 cool yeah typical micron timings won't post with lower timings or higher frequency up to 1.4 volts B550 vision D I would why is your proc ODT at 48 Like, admittedly, I've not tried dual rank rev e sticks on my uh, vision, but uh, that doesn't look right. I'd try lower proc ODT. Anyway, um, 4, 6, 16, good. 4, 8, fine. TWR, 14, kind of loose. TRFC, 540, good. T SCL's 4, 4, good. TC, well, could be better, but. Fine. TCWL16, good. RTP8, good. T RDWR9, good. WRD4, a bit loose, but... No, like, the, the thing is, in my experience, trying to set these two timings manually doesn't generally... Like, lowering these two manually generally doesn't tend to go very well. Um, so I usually just let the board deal with them and call it a day. Consequently, I don't really have any suggestions for these two. Uh, four, four, six, uh, six, six, also good. Um, so yeah, this looks okay. I think your proc ODT is probably the limit. Like, I, like the Vision D should be on the same daisy chain topology as my D Vision D-P, and, like, on that topology, 40 ohms is, like, the best pro like, termination. So, I would probably go straight, like, I'd try 40. Um, I don't know, like, maybe he already tried 40 and it doesn't work, and then, fair enough, it's at 48 and that does work, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely try 40 ohm proc ODT. Dual rank Samsung B die, limited to 8 gigs. Oh, yeah, 8 gig maximum. 5800X, 
got bench settings. 12, 8, 11, 11, 21, 20, 94, 4, 16, 2, 7. Whoa, TRFC's at 200. SCL 3, 3. Yeah, imagine if this wasn't, like, blue screen. Like, the, the problem with these kinds of settings is... Um, well, like, the, the, this, uh, memory, overclocking RAM for benchmarks is way more fun than overclocking RAM for 24-7 operation, because you get to run settings like this and go like, man, my latency is so low, bandwidth kind of sucks, but, um, uh, unfortunately, this is not viable for long-term operation, but it looks cool, um, and this is on a B550 Unify X. I would have expected 3800, though. Yeah, at 1.8. Oh, it's actually, yeah, it's not that aggressive a max mem and 1.8 volts. So the funny thing with BDI is as you keep cranking up the voltage, you need to redu like continuously re reduce how much memory is accessible to Windows. Though actually, these are, these are dual rank DIMMs, so 8 gigs should be viable even up to like 1.9 or, or 2 volts depending on the sticks. Um, and you should, at that point, be able to do, like, 3800. Also, I would really probably try messing around with, like, more than... Like, if you're just benching, I would totally try to go for, like, 2000 FCLK or something, because um, for most benchmarks, having a slightly unstable Infinity Fabric doesn't really negatively impact them. So, yeah, like, if we're if we're doing dumb memory settings, like, make them really dumb <laughs> instead of just, like... Like, this is kind of tame by, like, bench setting standards. Um, but uh, this would actually be daily stable. It, oh, okay, well, that, that changes things quite a lot. It passes Y-Cruncher test mem 577 anti extreme OCCT. Yeah, but you can't live with 8 gigs of RAM. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, that that's cool. Um, I've done nothing at all, and your timings are trash. 7700K, G skills, Trident Z, 3333 at 3333. Cool, moving on. Uh, G skill, CJR. Ooh, finally not B-Die. Okay, we've got 16, 19, 19 at 3666, 20, 28, 48, 446. I mean, 4616, good, 410... 466, yeah, the nice thing about the Hynix memory chips is that they do kind of low TRFC, which on Ryzen has a way larger impact than it does on Intel, because on Intel you can just delay the refresh and uh, refresh cycle, whereas on Ryzen, like, the refresh cycle happens exactly 14,000, like, every, like, 7.8 microseconds, every 7.8 microseconds, pretty much, like, no matter what. So your only way to reduce how much refreshing the RAM, like, how much time the RAM spends refreshing is by reducing the refresh cycle. So Hynix kind of has this, like, weird benefit on Ryzen that it doesn't really see on Intel, because on Intel you can just crank the refresh interval, and then the fact that you spend 600 or 500 clock cycles refreshing is just kind of like, eh, doesn't really make a difference. Um, SELs are 4.4, fine, RTP8, fine, RD, the cool, 4.4, Wait a minute, is this 5-5? Five, five. That's impressive that the right-to-right -right timings are 5-5. Five, five. That might be a Hynix thing. I d to be fair, I don't think I tested that when I was messing with the DJR sticks. Then again, this is a 3666. Might be part of that. Cool. Uh, my PSC timings. Yay, DDR3. Unfortunately, I'm bad at it. 8-11-8 at 2400. T4 is too tight. No, it isn't. It needs above 1.9 volts. Well, yeah. <laughs> TRD4. Yeah, no, it's not too tight. Like, who... Why... What? There, There is no such... Th like, there is... So, there, you can have your timing so tight that it crashes. Yes. But if it's not crashing, it's not too tight. The only exception to this is the refresh interval, which I don't think you have maxed out. Because here's the thing about the refresh interval. If you tighten your refresh interval, you lose performance. 
So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, this looks like... Unfortunately, I am not super good at DDR3, um, but uh, this looks good to me. And whoever said TFAW is too tight doesn't know what TFAW does. Um, the hell is this? I'm not reading this. This is terrible. What even is this? DDR2? Wait, what? Man, I'm moving on. More generic B die, this time on a Strix F, and it's single rank. That explains it. Um, like, to be fair. Oh, yeah, and we've got another 5600X doing high FCLK. Man, I should try to get a 5600X. It's a bit late for that now, or a 5600. TRP plus TRS equals TRC. That 44 should be 35 instead. No. I mean, like, the thing... The thing is, if you set your TRC to 44 instead of, like, what this guy said down here with 35, you lose some performance. But... Uh... It doesn't cause any stability issues. Because TRC... Like, TRP... Like... I've made videos about this. Why am I explaining this? I I have a solution. Where is the TRAS video? Ah, yes, the absolute chaos of TRAS. I bet this is one of like the funny thing about the memory timing series is that oh, I'm not logged in. Well, anyway, I am going to tell that person to go watch that video because they evidently freaking didn't. Because you don't, like, you don't have to do this. Like, to be fair, your TRC being at 44 instead of 35 is costing you some performance. But there's no reason it has to be 35. Um, anyway, 1.5 volts dim, 1.32 SA, TCL isn't strong, but who cares? Uh, 16, 15, 15 on Z690. Yeah, well, TCL doesn't matter. 200,000 refresh interval. Man, like, well, if it works for you, I guess fair enough. Like, the the thing is, I don't generally recommend people set their TREFI super duper high because it's kind of awkward to test for the kind of memory corruption that not refreshing the memory frequently enough can cause. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, every time you access a row, um, it actually kind of gets refreshed. Um, so you basically need to leave, like, if you want to cause a refresh interval data corruption, you need to leave the RAM, like, sitting idle for ages, and then check if the memory's, like, like if the information's still there. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the main reasons I don't necessarily recommend, like, 200,000 refresh interval. However, what you can do is actually test a ludicrously high refresh interval at, like, a very low memory frequency, which effectively, like, if you're at 4,000 and your refresh interval is 200,000, if you go down to 2,000 and set your refresh, and keep your refresh interval at 200,000, it actually ends up taking twice as long between refreshes. And so you can basically sort of see, go, like, you can basically do a test of, like, well, if the data doesn't disappear after what is effectively 400,000 refresh interval, then it really shouldn't disappear at 200,000. And, and you can kind of tell yourself that, you know, that's fine. <laughs> um, I've not verified how reliable that is, because, again, like, for, like, causing refresh interval-related errors is very, very difficult in my experience. Um, and it should definitely happen at some point, but it's just, yeah... Um, I don't know, maybe I need to set up some kind of test where I take a, a memory stick and, like, run it really hot and at, like, low speed set the refresh interval to, what is it, 260,000, I think, is the refresh interval limit for 12th gen. And, like, if it still doesn't cause data corruption at that point, then I guess we can just kind of run whatever refresh interval you like. Um, 
because uh yeah like because the temperature should cause the the capacitors to leak charge uh faster um but yeah like super high refresh interval is is uh like also a past a certain, like the other thing is it doesn't really make that much of a performance difference go like is you keep increasing the refresh interval because this isn't like this isn't like a lot of the other timings where it's like well now this operation is just like like if you go from a read to read of like of a read to read of eight down to six it just means oh you can send the next read burst uh every six cycles instead of every eight right and that's like a big improvement but the refresh interval just controls how spaced out your refresh cycles are and so past a certain point like you're you know the sure the gap between the refresh cycles is getting twice as big but the refresh cycle takes so little time relatively speaking that it doesn't matter anymore past like it doesn't really have much of an impact past a certain point so yeah Samsung 8 gigabit C die 182222 at 3730. That's actually really high for C die. Is it? Yeah, I think that's kind of high. Um 4416, nice. 4810, 592, 44. At 1.33 volts. This is actually not bad. I mean TRC is terrible, but eh, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I think I'll end it here. Yeah, the video is almost an hour again. So that's it for the, uh, latest installment of reacting to people's RAM timings. Um, actually, let's just quickly click on this. 4,260. This is neat. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. TWR is awful. Also, I guess that might, well, no, it is just bad. Um... Why is your TCWL at 18? RTLs look okay. These are dual rank dims. Oh, this is... No. No, this is not okay. 8, 4, 12, 12. So... Like, I don't... Off the thing is, I can't. What CPU is this even? Twelve nine hundred KS. Yeah, and like different rank thirteen. Right, like right to right to read different rank is fine, but right to read same group, different group. No, no. No. Oh. Uh, actually also kind of no. Six. Fall, well, T falls fine, I guess. RTP is fine, I guess. Refresh intervals maxed out, but these tear cherries are, are awful. Yeah, like they're, they're just awful. There's, there's nothing else I can really say about them. Um... Even, even the same group timings are bad. Anyway, um, end of video. So yeah, that's that's the latest uh, installment of looking at people's memory timings. Um, I guess thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I also have a band camp. Um, if for some reason, uh, you, you want like industrial noise in, in your life. <laughs> so anyway, you could check that out. There's a link to that in the description as well. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.